Before I get into the story, I want to say that this is part three of three. Part one was all about the upcoming technology. Part two was all about the rules we'll have to change to allow this technology on the road. Part three, this video, is all about the future I see with this technology. Now, let's continue the story. There are a lot of truck drivers out there, and a lot of them will be out of work. I'm going with the idea that the technology will need another 20 years before trucks will be totally driverless. My thoughts are that local in-city deliveries will be manned, but the long hauls on major highways will transform first. I would expect that tomorrow's truck driver will load the truck, take it to a truck depot along a major highway. The truck then takes off and drives to another depot closer to the destination. Then the driver gets out, gets into another truck that just arrived, and he delivers the cargo to his destination. The first step will be in making the truck driver a local delivery only. But eventually all deliveries will be autonomous, but it will happen in stages. I also see buses taking the same route. Out of town routes will be driverless, followed by in town buses. Eventually, there won't be any professional driving jobs. Many of us own cars because we want to go somewhere, we want to go now, and we don't want to wait for someone to take us there. And when we decide to leave, we want to leave now. If you figure that your car is parked for most of the day because it's in your garage or at the office parking lot, we pay a lot of money for that freedom to go when we want and where we want. Picture a driverless car world where we have all the benefits and very little of the cost. One thing Uber really showed us was that cab rides don't have to be expensive. If you had a taxi take you to work and take you back home, you would soon realize that you need to buy your own car as this method of transportation was too expensive. But in today's Uber world, where you live in town, you might find that the total cost of an Uber would be about the same as if you bought a car and had it insured. The only difference is that if you had a car, you don't have to wait or rely on someone else. Driverless cars will make it a no-brainer in not buying a car. Picture a pool of cars driving around available to pick you up. You order a car to pick you up at 7.30 in the morning and take you to work. If you carpool, the ride will be cheaper. All these rides are coordinated, so there's at least one car available in every area. Even if you like having your own car, you're not going to be using it all the time. You may already be at work, or maybe you're sleeping, or maybe you decided you're already in for the night. You could rent your car out for deliveries. As long as it's back in time, why do you really care where your car has been? Maybe even make a few dollars, doing absolutely nothing. There'll be less need for parking lots, especially lots that charge a rate. Why pay for parking downtown when you can tell your car to go home or go and park somewhere that's close and it's free? And when you're ready to go home, you can tell it to come and pick you up. Owning a paid parking lot will not be a cash cow anymore as drivers become fewer and fewer. That will change the way we build everything. A mall may only have a few hundred spaces. All the unused pavement will be turned into new buildings. Out shopping downtown and tired of carrying all your findings? We'll call a cab and it will come and meet you and take your deliveries and packages to your house. Flying drone technology seems to be a few years ahead of driverless car technology. So I expect your pizza to be delivered by drone before it's delivered by car. But the same idea of the air is coming to the ground. As soon as you order it online, a robot will put in a truck and it will automatically start making deliveries when it's full. And you will get a text when it's dropped off in your driveway. And even maybe your little robot servant will go out and pick it up and bring it into the house. The number of cars will dramatically drop as people realize that 100 cars could service 10,000 people. The infrastructure that North America has put in place for the manufacturing of automobiles will start to wind down. It's hard to believe now, but there'll be a time very soon, 
in which one automotive plant could supply all the cars needed for an entire continent. Driverless cars will give us a revolution that may be only equivalent to the internet or blockchain technology. It is interesting to think that these vehicles will be self-aware enough that they will service themselves. These cars will be heavily censored and when one stops working the car will automatically book its own mechanic appointment and have a specialist repair it. The mechanic will bill the car owner without even seeing who the owner is. We will hear stories in the future about the owner of a fleet of cars being dead for years and the cars keep working for him long after he's dead, repairing and replacing themselves as they get older, all independent of the human owner. I sometimes wonder if one day we will build a totally automated world in which we will not need to do anything. But then one day a plague hits and kills us all off. But the machines don't know that. Crops are still being planted and harvested and delivered, but there's no one around to eat them. Buses make their rounds and maintenance robots repair our infrastructure and there's not a soul in sight. If I was an alien in the future, I'd find this a little bit creepy that the world is preserved in time and no new technology is being created as robots are good at following orders, not creating new products. Don't get me wrong, despite all the things I said, it's not like I don't want this future to exist. Sometimes we wonder what the end game of a technology is. Maybe it's as simple as freeing up the pointless jobs so they can focus on more important tasks in our lives. Driverless cars are inevitably coming and that will change everything that we do now. But for now, I say goodbye and may you have many happy thoughts until next time. Written, read, produced by Larry Jacobs.